open, please, the file custom functions, PHP functions folder, right? The one we worked with last time. We will need to copy something out from this file. So I've prepared three blocks of e-learning for you. And uh, the first block is a very short one, the one we are currently in. And then we proceed to more complex things. I have two assignments for you after um, each one of the first blocks. So um, let's start like you are used to with a new PHP file based on an HTML5 doc type. New PHP and I choose the doc type to be HTML5. The title should be simple form input because that's what we are going to work with today. Right? The last files we worked with were uh, centered all around functions and values and passing on values to a function. It was kind of static anyway because all the value um, we worked with, all the values we worked with were hard-coded. Hard-coded means they were laid inside the code directly. Now we are going to make this a bit more dynamic. We are going to fetch our arguments from outside. We are going to use an HTML form to submit values to a PHP function and then calculate with this. Good. I suggest if you uh, like always follow my file convention so that the files are exchangeable, you uh, would like to save this as form underscore inside your forms folder. Here we are. So the next thing we are going to do is that we are going to set up a PHP function. Of course we need a function if we want to pass on some parameters. It doesn't pass on arguments rather. That's why I ask you to already have the file customfunctions.php open. I'm going to switch over to this file and functions. What I'm actually aiming at is the function down below our convert seconds function. You remember the small functions where uh, we um, kind of calculated from a given number how um, many seconds and minutes that would be. Everything. Function to the opening brackets here to the closing brackets. Make sure that you got everything with you and then on your Windows PC hit of course Control C to copy it. Now return to the file we just created, the form input. Right. H, we are going to insert the function. Do not directly copy it. First, make sure that you inserted a PHP code block. And then inside this code block, please paste the function you just copied from our old file. And this results in a <laughs> Dreamweaver CS6 crash. Sorry for the inconvenience. Looks like we started. Why I don't know. Black screen. I had such an error actually. Yeah, Andrea, Windows. You are probably right. Huh? So I'm just starting Dreamweaver again. 
<laughs> no, it's not a blue screen. <laughs> it's the black screen of death. <laughs> no, nothing happened. So, here we are again. Here we are again. Form input. Let you do the trick. Um, well, probably my copied function is still on the clipboard, so I just try to paste it again. Let's see what's happened if I'm going to insert a PHP code block. I'm doing this rather, rather carefully now. I'm just, just, and it's not crashing, right? If I can paste it, it has also been cleared from Dreamweaver, so I need to open it again. This is the site, not the basics folder, not the decisions folder, but the custom functions. So, here again, I'm going to get my function convert seconds. It tells me I have to save a lot while doing e-learning. So. Control C, shutting this file down, and then I'm going to paste it. Yes! And not even a syntax error. Great copy and paste action. And I'm going to save this file right now in case that anything... You guessed it, if we would like to um, submit a dynamic argument to this function, right, which would then arrive at the function as seconds here. Good, Lisa. Am I too fast? Too fast, furious? Try to talk to me or to send me a chat message. You're missing some code. Am I missing some code? Right, you have seen it. You have seen it exactly. There is missing some code. Thanks, Louise. So I'm taking the last line over. I think it was actually just the. Right? Thanks. Good feedback. And I will proceed. Very good. Yes? Thanks. Good. Um, you guessed it. If we want to deliver any um, argument to this function, which er, is arriving then as dollar sign seconds, we need to set up something which is able to submit input from a user, and that would be the classic HTML form. So we are going to set up in our body, in our HTML body, of course, we are going to set up in our HTML body a simple form containing one input field plus a label, that means a title to this field, and a submit button, which is going to trigger this action. And uh, then you would use, you can just type ahead, or we can also just start inserting a form from the Dreamweaver main menu. Right? Insert. We have the overall form tag. Now, action, leave it blank. This is going to be important later on. Um, the method is now interesting. You have a method get, and from the drop-down menu, you have also post. Going to choose post every. There's a difference between those two methods. I will. Uh, brief you in a second about the differences between post 
um, and get. So the name, um, is uh, also important, call it convert. Word and target you leave blank and you can just press OK. See this is a very basic Dreamweaver wizard so it uh, just gives us the overall form tag. In is blank we have defined a method post and a name convert. Now before I'm going to explain what's going on with method post here and which kind of action we are going to take, let's set up the rest of the form so that should be no problem for you. Um, you should uh, probably first of all an input type text our input field right input type text something here And the name, which is also going to be important for this input field, should be chosen carefully. Important name, then in double quotes, seconds. So, very keen, then you can already see a kind of connection, right? We have an input type text field named seconds. And we are expecting seconds as an argument here. Mm -hmm. um, I would also like to set a label so above. I'm choosing the label tag. Label for kind of custom headline for this field, right? And then uh, together with an extra with an instruction for the user type seconds. So, and then the label is closing. And then we need one more element in order to be able to trigger any action with the form, and that would be an input type submit. This is creating a button, a submit button for us. So, you type input type Submit. This is creating our button. Name is very, very important, as you're going to see later on. As a name, I'm going to plain and simple send, because that's what's going on. And then we can kind of uh, assign a label to the button. This is caught in the attribute value. anything which applies to the button, like I'm choosing calculate minutes and seconds. In order to format this form a bit more, I'm going to um, separate paragraphs here. Together with the input type, I'm going to uh, choose an embracing paragraph. We can do this by marking the whole thing and then from the insert menu, I would like to choose a text object paragraph. Right. This is not strictly necessary, this is just for formatting reasons. has no functionality at all, this um, step, if you like. And the same thing I'm going to do with my input type button. Insert HTML text objects, paragraph around. So, now I can save it to split my window you see what we just created a simple form field type 
seconds here and then our action button calculate minutes and seconds that's all good I'm going back to code view now method post and get in a form it's been a while first semester I think where we discussed um, the differences between get and post um, well the difference the main difference between those methods is that get yeah it's it's a bit more unsecure than the post method because um, in in uh, using the get method means that the data is visible to everyone because get is submitting everything from a form as an attachment to um, the URL in the browser. There's also other restrictions, but whenever you use get, you are sending um, your data as an um, to the sending URL. Post is better, more secure anyway, a little safer than the get method because the parameters are not stored in the browser history or in web server logs and the data which you submit using post is not displayed in the URL of the browser. So whenever you're in doubt you would choose post as your form as your form method, sorry. Now we are getting to uh, the form action that tells the form what to do. Now what are we wanting to do with this form? Well, actually we want to trigger this PHP script above. Typing a PHP as form action. So insert a PHP code block inside the form action to be a PHP echo because we want to submit this as um, HTML later on and you know the shorthand for PHP echo would just be replacing the PHP part here with an equal sign. So now follow me and type dollar sign underscore Capital letters server. You should also see it now in your Dreamweaver context menu. Owner bracket is opening, and there in this corner bracket, you need as a single quoted string it in capital letters always PHP score self. single quoted string finished and closing the cornered brackets and then you should get rid of all Adria just asked where would you use get then hmm yeah that is a good question well personally I would never use it hmm? unless um, I have good reasons to um, yeah, display my data in the browser URL. I, um, or, or if I wouldn't if I, if, I, um, if I would like that what I'm submitting is cached in the browsers and uh, that it can be bookmarked. Well I have to think of a, of a, of a practical reasons. Right? So that means if you, if you would like to make your data available, for the user also for later use then you would um, choose get if you would like to make it secure like submitting passwords user data anything you would like to um, submit as secure as possible then you would then you would use post as your method so for you it's important to remember post is kind of stealth mode in submitting data and get is a kind of public um, method to submit data Stop. playing this PHP statement here 
um, the server thing here, that is actually a so-called super global array. So this is not a word from new economy. This means that um, this is um, targeting the server itself and PHP self is pointing to the file name of the currently executing script. I'm going to repeat this. P underscore self is pointing to the file name of the currently executing script. Nothing more than if you call PHP self, then you mean the document itself, itself or all scripts included. In the next session we are going to learn how to uh, include external files and scripts inside PHP. But what this basically means is on this server execute um, the or look for the current script and submit your data. Your data as an array. Now our array is not going to contain so much but whenever we press the submit button we are collecting all data from this form as an array. How this is going to look and feel we are going to explore right now. Include the following PHP code on top of your script. This is now to see what a form array is containing. Before the function, I'm setting an if condition. Sorry, I'm capital letter still. If condition, and then I would like to execute something, right? So that would be the general Syntax. Good nickname for me, General Syntax. <laughs> well, never mind. Something is true or false, then do something, our um, if condition. So, we are going to check if a certain variable exists, and this would be dollar sign. post well, without the brackets, right? So, um, this is now checking for an array, or well, basically for a variable, but it will always be array, for a variable called post. And I think you can make the connection, it's actually what's arriving here from this form. Whenever the form is submitted, this one here, you will create a variable holding an array called post. So if you would choose get uh, your method, you would kind of um, assign underscore get here. That does make sense, right? So I'm adding a comment here. Checking, checking the from the form is arriving. I'm checking for the existence of the variable post. That means it will only exist if the form is submitted, not before. And then we are going to um, use a simple print R construct to um, get everything out of this SP. SP uh, dollar sign post as soon as it's uh, submitted. So I'm going to include an echo here, single quoted string, contents of the score post array. So more human readable. Um, then I'm going to insert a line breaker here, HTML five line breaker by a single quote 
semicolon, then print R. Print underscore R dollar sign underscore post. Do it. Oh, this would check the existence of the array post coming from the form and then echo out the very contents of this post array. Now, um, the live function of Dreamweaver would not be a good idea to test this, so I would suggest you test this in a browser. Now you should see my browser window appearing. There's my form, type seconds, calculate minutes and seconds. Let's just type any number. Calculate the script. At least the submission, right, is working perfectly in my case. So I can send the data and the global post array is arriving at my script. Now, using print R, let you look inside an array so you can see exactly what is going on here. Let us have a look inside the array seconds. Right. And there we have our array keys. Currently, our array contains two keys, actually, and two values. The first key is seconds. Well, you guessed it, this comes from the input field called seconds. So the name of the form elements, the names of the form elements are kind of caught by our array and submitted. And there's the value we just typed in, right? Preserved now in the dollar sign post array. And then we have a second element, sent containing the value calculate minutes and seconds. You know what this is. This is our send button and we can kind of ignore it. We don't need it, but we will need the first value here, seconds from the array. Now, yeah, the winning question how could I trigger the function now? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I'm going to comment out the echo here and the print. I would not more. Let me ask you, any ideas? Transmit the value from the post array to the function. What would I do? What would I do? You know also? <laughs> maybe, maybe, Luise. Okay, Luise, then click um, on the code where you would like to insert something. Would you do something with the function? Condition. Perhaps you should call the functions on click within the submit form. JavaScript, right? That is not what we are aiming at currently, so we are not going to inject JavaScript. You have an idea? So that's great that you have an idea. <laughs> Would you like to share it? Whoa! 
Oops. If post convert seconds post, oh, okay, you you posted this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, basically, we just we we uh, we need just one line. This is actually the one. Convert seconds and call it with the s post parameter post um, key seconds. That's actually right. Very good. So for all of the rest, check your script and check your if condition. Right? If dollar sign post. Right? Not if it's not set. Then the function below convert seconds. It's key sensitive, so be careful what you type. And then already call uh, the function, right? Convert seconds below, but without any argument submitted. And that is exactly what we would like to do here. So the parameter comes from the s from the dollar sign post array so you type array well and then we know exactly what we are aiming at in the post array right so we can specify the key because we know the key one parenthesis too much we know the key already and the key would be right The key. What did you just <laughs> type? Oh my! Oh well, I read "Oh my goddess," but it was "Oh my goodness." Mm. <laughs> hey, brain sharing! That would be um, actually good. Good tip. Yes, brain sharing. That is that is a future future business, I think. Let's test this in a browser. The new script, calculate minutes and seconds. Wow, isn't this beautiful matter? Hmm? The function is called from an if condition a dynamic value is submitted. Right. So this would now already conclude the first block of my today's distance PHP module. I'm going to upload exactly this file to the LMS and to give you a small yet very interesting Learning assignment number one, which I'm going to set to visible. How? So keep your file open because you are going to um, work with this assignment until 10.15 when we are going to meet together online. So, the e-learning assignment number one states the following. Open the file form underscore input PHP from the folders forms or work on your own sample. So, you see that I expect that everyone is concluding this assignment. You e-learners have a advantage today because I will present and discuss the solution together with you. Though I would prefer if solutions are of course submitted here. So, um, we have a form, right? The form is a simple HTML form and currently a user could submit literally anything like uh, words, phrases, non-valid characters and we would like to add a routine now making this impossible for a user. So, I stated add appropriate methods to avoid non-valid user input and I defined non-valid user input in submitting a blank field should not be possible so the function should only be executed if the user is typing something into the form field and 
then again make it impossible that other characters than numbers are submitted to the function so that the user is not be able to submit a string to the function for instance so that would be the first part of the assignment methods to avoid non-valid user input and then I would like to ask you to make the user aware of your routines that means provide some user feedback if there is non-valid input please display the message not able to convert non-valid input right and then you after our uh, file naming conventions you would like to attach your file right and I'm looking forward to see some solutions already at 10.15. This assignment and the next assignment are going to stay open some days so that all of you um, have the possibility to conclude it. Right? So um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to upload my current file to the LMS so that everyone has the same start position. I would make yourself a coffee, borrow some brains, and uh, think about this assignment, right? How to avoid non-valid user input and how to put out a message if there is non-valid input. That would be a uh, basic form validation already, right? So. Thank you for this first blog. It was an um, interesting experience just to talk to a computer screen. Um, well, I actually like it. Probably I'm, I'm, I'm a kind of uh, a social element. Goodbye.